G'day everyone. Does your rear end feel loose? Are you getting a whole heap of bangs you don't want? Chances are you probably need to swap out your rear subframe bushings, especially if your car is as well loved as mine. So today, I'm going to show you how to swap out these and upgrade to some nice polyurethane, all without any special tools and minimal effort. Let's go check out what tools we need. First up, as always, you'll need a car jack and axle stands. You'll need a ratchet, a breaker bar, and an extension. Half inch is best inch. You'll need a 23mm socket for the subframe nut, an 18 for your wheel nuts, and a 13 for some bolts. You'll also need a 17mm spanner to remove the seatbelt clips. You'll need a big hammer, and if you're not strong enough, some WD-40 goes a long way. To get the bushing out, you have to find something cylindrical, which is slightly smaller in diameter than the bushing and about this deep. In my case, I've used a ring from a bearing puller kit, which was pretty much perfect, but you could use a block of wood or the bones of your enemies, for instance. I also use these plates as additional spacing. Most importantly, you need a heat gun. Your bushing will not come out without this. Finally, a stick to use as a lever. Make sure it's a precision stick. Start by jacking up the rear of the car, unclipping the rear seat from the inside, and then dropping off the wheels. Next, we need to remove this plate which covers the subframe bushing. There's two bolts at the front and a single nut. The nut comes off using the breaker bar and the 23mm socket, and the two bolts use a 13mm socket. Once you've got one side off, slide the jack under and support the subframe so it doesn't fall once you do the other side. Get the other side and then move inside the car. Use a screwdriver to carefully peel back this sound dampening tape which covers the top of the pin that runs through each bushing. Here's a crappy view at the top of the pin. There's no thread, the pin has to be bashed upwards with a hammer to get it out. This is where the WD-40 is great. Spray some down the hole, wait a minute, and then thread the nut back onto the pin um, a few turns. Use the socket as a hammering block and hit it hard with that hammer. Don't be afraid if it takes a bit, it's gonna be in there fairly tight. Just make sure that you don't strike the pin because if you bend it, you'll need a new one and that sucks. Oh, and don't forget to remove the seat belt um, using the 17 millimeter spinner. You should be able to lift the pin out now, and this is what it looks like here. There's some splines at the top which hold it in place. Do the same for both sides and then we can get to the fun part. Alright, now this is how you get a bushing out the backyard way. With both the pins out, you can remove the jack so now there's a gap above each bushing. I didn't film this, but what you need to do is use the special precision lever device to force the subframe down as far as you can. Then, get your spacer, whatever it is, and squeeze it in on top of, and then line with that bushing, making sure it doesn't touch the metal ring around the edge of the bushing. Then, jack up the car by positioning your car jack on the subframe as close to the bushing as possible. This will lift the car up off the axle stands, so make sure they're still in position. When you do this, all the weight is going to be acting on the spacer and it's going to try and push the bushing down and out. Okay, so this is on the other side of the car now and if you look you can see the spacer already in position above the bushing and the jack is already lifting the car on the subframe. Now let's get cooking. Use the heat gun and blast the bushing into submission. Heat around the sides and on the bottom and the rubber should start smoking and getting loose. Keep at it for a while and very soon gravity will do the rest. Here you can see the difference between the old and the new bushings. While the OEM bushings are a single unit, the new polyurethane bushings come in two pieces. This makes installation really easy. It means we don't need any special tools and can just slot them into position. Before you slot them in, use the provided grease and lube up the outside and the insides of each bushing. This should stop the bushings from squeaking in the future, which is one of the few downsides of polyurethane. 
Now slot the top and bottom bushings into position in the hole, followed by the metal sleeve up through the center. Now the rest of the installation is just the reverse of what we did earlier. Reinsert the pin into the body of the car and guide it through the new bushings. You'll have to use the jack to get everything to line up and make sure that the pin is seated properly in its hole so that all the splines are lining up. Then put the plate back in position on the bottom of the bushing and loosely put the nut back on. Do up the two bolts and the nut so that they're finger tight but don't torque anything down yet. Chuck the wheels back on and then lower the car into the ground. With the bushing supporting the weight, now we can torque the bolts down so they're nice and tight. I don't know the specific figures, but just do it till it feels good. Once you put the seat belts and your seat back in, that's pretty much it. It's time to take it for a test drive. All right, so it's the day after I put the bushings in and we've gone for a nice drive up the, uh, up the mountain. And the car feels really good. So the rear end feels a lot firmer and I can actually feel what's happening through my butt now. Um, there's a little bit more road noise as well, but I don't really think it's much of a big deal. So yeah, I think it's a good move. And as you can see, the car still drives real nice and smooth. And that's it. That's sort of changed the rear subframe bushings on a BMW E34 at home with no special tools. All right, well, good luck, have fun, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.